Hi guys, welcome back. Oh wait, the TV's on. <laughs> we would leave that on the so whole fucking time, literally. Okay, hi guys, welcome back to Was That TMI, where we tell the truth, whole truth, nothing but the truth. We have a very special guest. Hey guys. Okay, my name's Katie, if you don't know. Katie, this is Katie Richie, honestly, queen of fucking, is that right, Richie? Yeah. I never know how to say people's last names. No, and- because I've been saying... Crowell. Crowell. Yeah. Dude, people shit on me so hard one time when I interviewed someone. Interviewed. But I like, I was like, how do you say your last name? And I had said I'd been watching her for years and people were like, that was so weird that she didn't know how to say it. No one gets my last name right. No ever. one. Actually, everyone says Crowell. Crowell. No, I know. I didn't know until you said your last name like yeah. yesterday and I was like, wait, that's your last name. Everyone asked that. I feel like it's not that hard though. No. But no, everyone. Because honestly, I was going through it in my head and I was like, Crow. I would say Crow. <laughs> Crow. Crowell. People yeah. say Cromwell. It's weird as fuck. Okay. Anyways, Katie Ritchie blew up on TikTok really fucking quickly. Yeah, I actually started blowing up in like August. It, this year. Wait, really? Yeah. I thought it was so long ago. No, I started, I was stuck at 300K for years. And then like. Wait, okay. I did not know that at all. I thought really? totally this year everything started. Like I thought like back in like January no. is when you blew up. No, not and at all. And it was just actually. out of nowhere. No, in January I lived in Knoxville and I only like posted thirst traps if I was going to the bar. Okay, so but you've had followers. Yeah. Low key. Okay. Explain explain your journey. Okay. Anyways, so- Katie, TikToker, real fucking bitch, love her to death. We love met her so literally much. like three days ago and like I We've hung out every day since she's been here. Literally. Okay. Um, Tell your story. So basically I started on TikTok just my first video that blew up, first of all, I used to have black hair, like look completely different. And I had just went blonde, I remember. And my friend said something. She was Snapchatting a guy she liked. And I like looked good in the picture. And she was like, wait, can you like look ugly for a second? And I was like, wait a minute. That's funny. Sus. Say that in a toxic way. Like oh, she wasn't okay. being sus. Yeah. But I was like, that could be a really funny video. And we actually started a huge trend on TikTok. And when was this? Like... 2019 okay okay so this was my my first viral video i wait i did not know any of this no i know we we've talked about so much but there's still so much to talk about um so i posted that viral tiktok it has like 1.9 million likes which is like honestly my most viral tiktok is only 2.2 million likes i honestly have no idea what mine would be so that's crazy so that's still like really high up there for that me. is crazy and um i was like does anyone else have a toxic friend like this and i like fake cried like i fake like i okay. kept my eyes open till they watered and mm-hmm. i was like <laughs> like i'm just looking get in a picture and we actually started a huge trend and this video is like all over youtube still like p- and people would react to tiktoks wait and be in there. Yeah. crazy and so after that i had quite a few videos blow up but mm-hmm. i had it in no way like a loyal following right like yeah no it, they were just funny videos that would blow up were you just doing it for fun too yeah yeah no i wasn't even like my goal wasn't to be famous I, I like social media famous i always wanted to like be some sort of actress or something like mm-hmm. that yeah but i wasn't trying by any way it was like, just by like, any means you liked that shit yeah and um so i had a few videos go viral after that and honestly i'm not gonna lie i was just weird like, I would post, like, really weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, my God, there's this one city. You actually should put it in the video. It's so funny. It's me with pink hair. And it's you that- pink hair? Mm-hmm. Okay. I was weird. Like, I, that was just a really weird point in my life. Um, Slay, though. So, it was a Taylor Swift song, and it's that one. It's like, you need to calm down. Like, yeah. You're being too loud. And I was like, when I'm moaning, and, like, my boyfriend's mom, like... So you were just like out there. Like, with I it. was posting weird shit. You still low-key are, though, but I don't think that's that weird. I feel like I've just, like become more normal right i don't know because i always grown up more i sure. just yeah i had a really weird childhood you know mm-hmm. i moved around a lot i honestly didn't know my place mm-hmm. i don't know if this is because i'm a libra or because i don't know because libras mimic people's personalities when they're with them type thing okay so whoever i'm me with, with every like, boyfriend no like i'll totally just like be them not like be them but you I know, know you're saying their sense of humor and yeah. stuff and so i feel like i was just really lost and i also was living with friends all growing up so mm. i never had any alone time to really figure out who i was right so i was just posting weird stuff and then i mean later on i moved to knoxville and i was just stuck at 300k after this i mean i my views weren't really doing well or anything mm. i mean if i really needed like a video to blow up I think it would, Mm -hmm. but I was just posting stupid stuff I didn't even really care about. Um, I moved to Knoxville, and that was a terrible time period. I actually just moved back at the beginning of this year, so. And she's from Tennessee. Yeah, I live in Nashville, so I wasn't posting in Knoxville, like, any talking videos. And that was when you were, that's, like, college town, like, were you just going I was trying to get my college experience. Okay, and you're with one of your friends, right? Yeah, Mm -hmm. I moved in with two friends. 
have like a burp or something like do you know water and i burp and literally fart in this bitch like all that about okay period <laughs> yeah no, you got it i have no time. shame about burping i don't know if i could like fart on camera but um <laughs> so, guys hate it hate it oh no because i won't do it i literally my, won't. oh do you shit in front of your boyfriend I can't shit in front of him. I can, like, go in his bathroom and take a shit. Yeah. But, and honestly, I'll give him all the details. But Right. You're like, I just had the I'm not going to, like, let him, like, go in there after No, anything. I couldn't. Yeah. You're like, stop. Because, fun fact, the hottest girls have the worst smelling shits. They really do. Don't feel bad about it. They really do. My shits this weekend. <laughs> we won't even get into it yet. <laughs> Said he had some issues. I did. Okay, but you were living in yeah, Knoxville. And I just wasn't posting, like, any talking videos, which is what I love and, like, what I blew up for. Mm. And... I was just posting if I'd go to the bar, like, me looking pretty. And some of, some of those honestly did super well. Yeah. Because um, you're a pretty girl. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm like, wait. Thank you. <laughs> I'm always like, God, people are going to be like, you're a bitch. But um, it's so easy for people to think. I know. You're a bitch. Everyone takes Not something even the wrong you. way. They but do. But that's why I feel like I'm comfortable in here because you have a good following. Just get it. And also, I think, like, you have a good following that gets it. And you're you're getting so big so quickly to where people that are assholes have mm-hmm. to find something to hate on. Like, no, I feel like I had haters I like at first, and they kind of just, like, went disappear. away. Yeah. No, that's honestly a big thing for me. Yeah. yeah. I'll get into that after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I moved home from Knoxville because that was just the most depressing point in my life Mm -hmm. not ever there's been a lot yeah but um i was a really low point and me and my best friend were so secluded we had no friends really here Mm -hmm. and we both were kind of going through like breakups so okay we were like down bad and so i Uh, moved home knoxville small for bars yeah i mean there's a good amount of bars there Uh, okay yeah someone said there was only three because that's the college there's only like three like freshman ones you can get into but there's so many that you have to actually be 21 to get into um but just college was kind of like not the vibe anymore no, and i honestly I feel wasn't that. doing school and i didn't know what i was doing with my life mm-hmm. like genuinely i was a server at this restaurant that i actually hated mm-hmm. i quit after a week actually so i moved home and i did not want to move home but my roommate was so depressed lucy my best friend shout out lucy um shout out lucy i don't know her but i want she was to so depressed and i wasn't gonna hold her back because she wanted to move home and I, right. couldn't, I couldn't pay the rent all by myself and I didn't want to live there by myself. No. So I took one for the team. I was like, okay, I think it's an, all in God's plan. And like, this is what's supposed to happen. We're supposed to move back home. Mm. Even though I like did not want to, right. I had no one back home besides mm. Lucy. So, um, and when you say move back home, were you moving in with her or back to like your family? Yes. No, moving back in with her. Okay. Wait, so give that rundown really quickly about of, like, her moving in with Lucy and shit and how yeah. she's your best friend. Okay. So actually I just moved home for the first time in a while because I was living with my ex-boyfriend at the time, like this old boyfriend. And, in Knoxville? Um, no, no, no. Like before I met Lucy. Before you met Lucy. So okay. I, yeah, I lived with my boyfriend like freshman, sophomore year type. Yeah. Of high school. Yeah, of also. high school. And um, I knew I wanted to break up with him. I wasn't happy. I was honestly too young to be living with a boyfriend. Like, yeah. So not healthy. That's, that's really but young. I had a fucked up living situation with my family and stuff and drugs. So mm-hmm. I moved in with him and I knew I didn't want to stay there. So I ended up moving back home because my family would always get evicted and stuff. So they just got a new one. So I was like, okay, a few months before we're evicted, like I'll right. move back home. And this friend actually like introduced me and Lucy and like we don't talk to her anymore. That's really funny. But um, <laughs> was she rude? Um, there was just uh, a lot. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't really want to talk about Different her. Different episode. So I spend the night at Lucy's house. This is my first time meeting her, but we went to high school together. Mm-hmm. We were in the same gym class, but we did not talk. Okay. Like, Interesting. Actually like had no interest in being friends with each other. Mm-hmm. I felt like our vibes were completely off. Yeah. That's so key when you find the best fucking seriously, people. Seriously. And yeah. I had like, like I was in my little peep, like emo phase, okay. like, black jet, black hair to my butt. And she was like blonde and like bubbly <laughs> and sunshine. And I was like, no. Yeah. So... I have a sleepover with her and we actually end up loving each other. Aww. Like, and we deal with a lot of the same like mental illness struggles. Mm-hmm. Like we have been down bad together. So, um, I just never left. Like I spent the night and I literally never left. I would go to work with her. She worked at sweet CC's. I would go sit in the back office her whole shift. Like, so how old were you here? I turned, I was 17. Was she 17 too? No, she's a year younger than me. Actually like okay. a year and a half younger than me. So okay. she's 19 right now. I'm 21. And you're living with her family. Yeah. Her and her right. dad. She doesn't really have a family. Like she has a very broken family like I do. So mm-hmm. we just related a lot. Yeah. Like, and the, we live in like a wealthier town and stuff. And me and her had a lot of the same, like we were not wealthy. Like we did not grow up like this. Mm-hmm. So we really got each other. Yeah. And basically i mean we had both like attempted suicide in the past and stuff oh my god and 
we just yeah we were there for each other and her dad actually me and him are so close now like love him so much but he didn't want some random girl living in his house yeah and, and i'm sure at that age he was kind of like what's going yeah, on Yeah, like she's like a minor and like i don't want her here when you're not here like right that's weird so lucy was like if katie leaves i leave yeah. like she made sure i like could stay in her house which was so awesome and like no to that's find crazy. someone like that at that age too because yes, like, you're like not here. fully matured yes and i honestly thought i was like done making friends and fun fact i actually like lost all my friends when i met lucy because they were so jealous of her friendship really yeah like even my best friend Liv, <laughs> she probably doesn't want me to talk about it she felt replaced mm-hmm. and i totally get it because yeah. i'd feel the same way you guys were like sisters but it was, at like, that point no like i both love them so much mm-hmm. um and they actually like Liv came back and was like i'm sorry and she yeah. was like i honestly like never had a problem with lucy it was I just had, you <laughs> i had like a trio friend group low yeah. key that would kind of we would all be that way a little bit it's like, hard three is a really hard mm-hmm. number we have a new three now yeah we do Literally. have a new three but it, it works out good yeah I basically moved in with her we moved to knoxville together both went through breakups at the same time mm-hmm. actually after i met lucy it was about to be my 18th birthday and her childhood best friend had died Oh my like god! Two hours before it was about to hit my birthday. Holy shit! And she goes out to the living room because she's on the phone. So I don't know. And she comes back and she's like bawling. And I was like, Oh my god, what happened? And I had just met this friend. I had seen her like a couple times because yeah. everyone would just like go to Sonic and stuff. It was like that. And she got in a car wreck and died at sixteen. And holy shit! The next day was my birthday, and we had COVID. And oh it wasn't like God. just we had COVID. All of the town had COVID. So everyone still went to the funeral and stuff. It was like oh just gosh. terrible. That was a low, low, low. Also, Lucy just got broken up with. So we right. were just it's like, like things were crumbling. I feel like that was a bond that immediately like was never going away. Right. Like, we just yeah. were there for each other. Yeah. So much like trauma yes, together. And that her you guys dad like... at the end of the day was so thankful. She always had someone with her. I'm sure. Was so worried. I'm sure. So it really ended up working out. And yeah. Um, I actually just moved out recently because my mom got out of rehab and got sober. Mm-hmm. So, and that was honestly like really hard to move out. Like, Cause you're now back in your house with your mom yes. and your siblings. Yes. Yeah. So wait, explain your mom thing a little bit. Your yeah. mom like went so through. So my mom went to rehab April and my stepdad went in like a week before her. So they were kind of like, he was getting out before her basically. Mm-hmm. She was going to be in there for one more week. And I had talked to my stepdad. A lot of you guys know, like my, or if you know me, like my stepdad and me were never really close. He was always a really bad drug addict, but, um, she was like a week out of getting out and my brother calls me and my best friend Lucy's on a date. So I'm just alone chilling on the couch, literally eating like Cheetos. Right. And he was like, Hey Kate. And I was like, Hey, like just eating Cheetos on the couch. And he's like, have you heard from Dustin or stepdad? Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, like a couple days ago, like not thinking anything of it. And he was like, well, he's dead. I'm about to start doing it because that was just like, <gasps> that was just like, so like i was alone i yeah. just started like panicking and i was like oh my god my mom's gonna you're gonna make me cry no it's okay it's like oh i wasn't expecting to cry on here i know no that's like crazy yeah, and it you're was so like, young and you're like already have been through so like much. i already lost my dad yeah and, like i've always been worried for my mom like on drugs and stuff yeah and, like she's going to kill herself to lose it right because that's like her soulmate like they yeah. actually like they've been there a lot of shit but they always loved each other so much right and so i was like oh my god and he was like Katie, which when your mom and your biological dad were together were they do they have a good relationship or no no he like he cheated a lot mm-hmm. that's good that your mom found your stepdad though to like experience that yeah, you know to experience that type mm-hmm. of love for sure even though it wasn't healthy at times, like, I genuinely, like, believe that's her soulmate. Like, they got along like no other. Even after 17 years, you see m- marriages, like, get boring and stuff. Yeah. No, not them. They were always, like, in that's a fight because awesome. they loved each other so right. much. Yeah, that's crazy. And that's what actually, like, I think kept my mom sober. It was, like, it's a super sad situation. Did she find out in rehab or no? Yes. Okay, wow. She found out in rehab because my grandma had checked his location for my mom and he hadn't left his storage unit in three days because my mom and stepdad were like living in a storage unit before this holy shit yeah and he hadn't left in three days so my nana called for a wellness check Mm -hmm. and sure enough he was like overdosed on fentanyl right and so i was really really worried for my mom and me and my brother went and picked her up from rehab like when it was time to get out and mm-hmm. she was just bawling the whole day it was so terrible oh. and like i went and like bought my mom a phone and we we're like we're gonna figure this out she was living in hotels for a while right and so she finally like got a house where we i kind of grew up so mm-hmm. i was really happy about that and she actually ended up getting my siblings back because they were in foster care for a long time which was like so impressive if you know the are those system. siblings with your real dad or your stepdad my stepdad your stepdad okay so yeah that also broke my heart because i was there when 
we told them he died mm-hmm. and Dylan, the one I basically raised, like that was actually my child, was the same age that I was when I found out my dad died. And right. So it was just like to see them scream cry and I was like, this is like fucking deja vu and not fair. Like, yeah. Why is, why is this happening again? No, I like can't believe how strong you are. Like Thank you are you. so Sometimes like... Sometimes I honestly... Like, I can't even believe this is my life I'm talking about. I, I was know. like, wait, I actually did go through that shit. Yeah. No, that's insane. It like, you're literally, and you're just so, you speak of it so well. And, like, the way that you can, like, talk about all of it and, like, Thank the way you. you're there for all your yeah. siblings and shit that I see in your videos, it's literally, like, so admirable. Thank it's you crazy. So no, I, like, I really try to be the best for them. Mm-hmm. And they're doing- And your mom, too. So proud of her. Mm-hmm. Like, she's actually, she went on a date the other day, which is, like, crazy. No, that's I mean, so she cute. said it went terrible, but, like, she's oh, getting fuck. out there. It's, like, what matters. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm sure your mom's, like, like you're fucking heaven sent for your mom. Like, that's insane. No, and you know the crazy thing is, was before she, this all happened, I was actually, like, so depressed. Yeah. And was, I, like, hate to say this because it's never the answer and I don't want anyone to ever come to this, but, like, I was really debating on committing suicide. Yeah. Like, I was in a very dark place. I had no one, it felt like. I had Lucy, but, like, she was depressed, too. Like, right. Like, it was just... And, too, you guys are the same age. Like, yeah. that's so hard. No, it was that's so, so hard. hard. And we were just so lost. I was like, what am I doing with my life? Like, I don't have money to go to college. Right. Like, you can work for, like, 30K a year, which isn't going to get you anything. Right. And growing like, up... I was like, how am I supposed to pay my rent? Yeah. Like... And growing up, coming to the conclusion you're not going to go to college and graduating high yeah. school... And especially growing up in a town like you grew up in. We grew up in very similar no, areas. Like everyone picture perfect life. It's picture crazy. perfect. Like parents would say to me all the time, like, you're not going to go to college. Like those are the best four years of your life. And I'm like, do you want to fucking pay for it? Yeah, like, like that type of shit. So I don't so, have a family. When you fucking deal with that, it's mm-hmm. like you are like, damn, I'm different than everyone else. But yeah. then you realize you grow up in a bubble yeah. once you leave. No, for a literally. Bit, and it's so. not even just money. It was just like, damn, like I would kill for a family that just like yeah. was there for me. Um, even if we were poor. Right. You know? So, so you guys were you were 17 at the time when this yeah, happened and i actually like just was turning 18 just was turning 18 yeah. and then when did you guys decide to move to knoxville um so i took a, a gap year i'm actually just never going back <laughs> but um i took a gap year and was waiting for lucy to graduate and her, honestly she thought she was gonna stay here and then she went through a bad breakup and she was like okay like i need to get out mm-hmm. and so we both decided we we're gonna move to knoxville and it was good for the first few months we found a like good guy friend group super awesome and then it all went to shit and, so then like, when you guys moved back you were in your own house or no you were in lucy's for a little yeah, bit i was in lucy with her dad and then you moved in with your mom and stuff when yes. she got all of her stuff and that's where you are now yeah okay so how's lucy What's she up um, to? Lucy's good. She's in college. She's okay. working like all the time. She works her butt off. And like, Aww. like I said, jobs these days just aren't paying. Yeah. Good. So I, I feel for her so much and like want to get back to her and her dad like in any way I can. Mm-hmm. Um, she's, I think they're going to move to Florida within the next couple of years, which actually. I remember you telling me that. Breaks my heart. Because oh, like, yeah. Well, what am I going to do here without her? I don't know. Um, but she's good. She's super single. I'm like, guys um me too <laughs> yeah sadie too um yeah she's good she's living her simple little life yeah we see each other like a few times a week we okay. have our designated like sleepover days and stuff right cool so. that's awesome so when when did you were you back in your mom's house when it like all kind of blew up really quickly tiktok yeah okay so actually no i it started blowing up honestly like before before my stepdad even like died i think it started okay. to like i i noticed i was gaining more followers than usual you know right. like a lot of followers will say like just now and i'm mm-hmm. like wow it's usually like two hours ago someone mm-hmm. followed me so um i noticed getting a following from that and then i was staying with my mom in hotels a lot because i didn't want her to be alone right and so i'd make tiktoks with her and i noticed them doing well and like a lot of people just felt for me and was right. like i'm actually so proud of you because i posted about my how my mom was like sober now mm-hmm. and a lot of people were like i hope i can have this one day like this makes me so happy to yeah. see yeah and that's when a lot of people started following me and then i really got the most followers when i talked about my siblings in foster care because mm-hmm. that's th- when i found you yeah, I that's when everyone I found like you. just knew this about me because i'm used to like my old followers and i have talked about this stuff but actually not a lot of people knew at all so that's when it really started blowing up like my get ready with me got a million likes on a get ready with me like that was crazy mm-hmm. like that is, that is still and crazy. that shows too that people are fucking with you because like of you and who you are no and which is so dope that's that you so did awesome that. because like i don't i 
never want to be the picture perfect person for people. Mm. Like life is not easy. No, it's, people it's need so people hard. like you. Yeah. yeah, for sure. No, I always see those TikToks and it's like, I want this next generation of influencers to be normal people. And mm. I, I feel like I was like, okay, no, <laughs> I'm normal. Yeah, no, literally you yeah. are. And that's why I think me and you get along so well too. Like yes. when I noticed that, I was like, damn, like you're just no, you're so, so normal. Mm-hmm. Like, so are you never like a lot of people just aren't no at all on social media like no mm-hmm. they're not no one actually even like responds to me i feel like on social media and sadie did like I right away reaching out like yeah. i hate reaching out to people i feel so fucking awkward i i think i like dm'd you did you yeah i think yeah. you did <laughs> yeah that's really no funny. i remember when you did i was like oh my god because i saw also you made a video about guys you said something and you're like guys if you wanted to be fucking would or something like that. I definitely have quite a few videos. You like, like that. looked like really hot in it. And I was like, oh my God, this go. girl's like cute. Who is this? That's funny. Uh-huh. And then when I started watching, like, when I saw your family stuff, I was like, wait, this is crazy. Yeah. And then I started watching you and Cody. So uh-huh. Katie is like the most fucking perfect relationship ever. It's actually depressing to watch. If you could have told me I'd be posting a boyfriend like that soon and stuff, I would have been like, you're crazy. It's, but it's just you like, deserve I, it. Though. I can't like not post everything he does for me. He's mm-hmm. so good. So how'd you meet Cody? You're not boyfriend. Um, yeah, I've actually told this story on tiktok and i got a lot of like shit for it because everyone was like you showered oh. with him like the first day of meeting oh. him i was like okay Fuck so off. um i just had started hanging out with this new girl and it was literally like our second time hanging out and she was like i hit her up actually i had a hinge guy yeah i was like hinge ew. um it's okay we've no, all been there the guys they're on they're just like so terrible Here, literally any dating app that's so i true. like will go on there to try and make friends and i'm like they're just not, they want they, they don't want to be friends yeah with me no they're gross back. yeah they are but um i had a hinge guy i was talking to and he was like i'm having a darty a day party people get pissed when i say darty i'm like sorry that's what i know it as really yeah but darty yeah. yeah um he was like come to my darty and so i asked her i was like will you come to this darty with me and she was like yes but my friend wants me to stop by this one and it was cody's pool party like, oh my god the day. she had been to one of his pool parties before and facetimed me and cody saw me on facetime and he was like oh bring katie next time Slay. so i walked in i mean the first thing she looked my friend looked at me and said she was like do you think he's hot and i was like yeah but like not thinking anything of it yeah and he was all, like automatically so welcoming like gave us all the alcohol like let door dashed us like 300 dollars worth of chick-fil-a I can't yeah i talk but um just automatically so sweet and right good you, guy you could walk in and see this like beautiful house and be like he could be a snob but he's not yeah which is really rare i feel like with like guys with good families and stuff we ended up getting really drunk like taking hella shots and we were just talking for like seven hours straight at the those are the best the nights. kitchen table just like corner seats just like oh no in this and like it was i told him a lot about my tiktok i was like i think i'm actually starting to grow and stuff i was at, i was at 400k y'all and um he was like no like your personality like just hyping me up yeah and i ended up like kissing him in the pool like he was holding me and did I just, you make the first move i think so yes yeah i love making the first move no i always you hold do. so I'm much sorry power. like no i'm not the kind of person that's gonna wait until the, they go in for the awkward like no i know and i feel like too it's so scary but like you just have to literally say in your head like fuck it and then you just do it and, and the guys are like okay. i've never had a guy be like say what are you they doing won't. they yeah. literally won't and if they do don't talk to them again like yeah, fuck no, them. that's obviously not the one for you anyway mm-hmm. so um we got really drunk and i ended up like i was like <laughs> I can't believe I said this. I was like, show me your shower. Because I saw his shower had a mirror in it. Um, we did. Because it's a. He, okay, so Cody is like wealthy. I mean, he's done well for himself. Yeah, he's for sure. wealthy. And so his house that Katie will like sometimes be at is beautiful. I'd say, show me your fucking shower too. No. Nope. I'd be like, show me all your showers. No, and I knew the shower is like a huge walk in shower and it has a fucking mirror in it. Like, how cool. Yeah. So I was like, sh- and my friend was in there like taking nudes at one point. So mm-hmm. I was like, show me the shower. And um, so he did. And we just made out. Like, we yeah. just actually took a shower and like made out. And then he gave me like clothes to put on. And then I like proceeded to go jump in the pool again. Like, oh. right after. Yeah. At one point, I lost my vape, and he thought I was, like, upset about it. And then, like, we had to go. Like, all my friends were going home. I was actually upset that I wasn't getting to stay with him. I was like, right. I want to stay with this man so bad. Yeah. And he thought it was because I lost my vape. And I was like, Cody, no, that's not why I was upset. I just really wanted to stay with him. And he was like, okay, bye. And I was like, I guess okay. I'm never going to see him again. Yeah, like, what? And then he texts me as soon as I get home. And he goes, if you have a pretty dress, I want to take you on a date that's so like no, no one does that and nowadays. guys i don't remember giving him my number so i totally oh. thought i was never gonna hear from this guy yeah again. but he asked for my number and he i was like i do or something like that and 
he was like Thursday six thirty. Like, get, send me an address. That's literally so yeah. slay. And then their date went fucking perfect. No, absolutely perfect. I mean, okay. I always tell girls to do this because when he got there, he said here, mm-hmm. and I was with my best friend. We're getting ready. She was like say front door Mm -hmm. like just say front door and so i did and he actually told me later on that he like loved that princess treatment and he picked me up in like a 2023 g-wagon and brought me to the super nice italian place and crazy like valet opening my door i was like what am i doing i know and then got us like a bottle of red wine he just like had it like that and then he took me to la jackson a rooftop bar here in nashville we went there last night jesus yeah (laughs) oh we did go there yeah yeah it wasn't one of many night. places. Yeah. <laughs> we but, um, we went there and then I actually ended up staying the night at his house. Once again, we didn't do anything. Like he never brought up anything sexual, which I really admire. Such admired. a green flag. Yes. And for you too. Yeah, like, and we actually watched 50 shades of gray on our first date like that night. And you didn't hook up. No. Crazy. I mean like we didn't have sex. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I was just so attracted to him. I was like, like all over. Yeah. Him. Mm-hmm. No, and it just went perfect. And then we just kept hanging out, kept going on dates. Like we wouldn't just hang out. Like he would take me on like designated dates, which I really admired. Had you ever had that done before? Never. Yeah. So all my exes are actually the worst. What's like, what would you say for girls going through like kind of shitty men and now you're in like a good relationship? What are red fucking flags? Um, like stand God, out. There's so many for him. Okay. You first know, I've never all- been on a date. That's a huge red flag. Like, like I've never been on a date You've had multiple once. boyfriends and none of them have ever taken you on a date. I've never been on That's a date. That's crazy. I think it's really important in a, rela- a little relationship to um, go on dates all the time. And make time for like yes. those special nights. Because yes. no, then you're like, wait, this was so fucking fun. Yes. No, Cody always actually wants to like, take that. me on spontaneous dates. Like we went to Akon the other night and it was actually one of the best nights I've ever had with him. It was um, amazing. And um, but red I flag. feel like maybe I have been on like a date. But it's not, not a like date. A, like a, not it's like not a like, nice let date. me like, take you out like, ever. Babe, like, want to go to Olive Garden? Like, I'm hungry. Like, no, it's like, like should that. we go get food? Yeah. Or, like, should we DoorDash food? Yeah, that's the worst. Cody actually DoorDashed me food all the time, but it's like, I want to go out sometimes. Mm-hmm. But, um, or like when they say two separate orders. Oh, not the two separate orders. Such that's a, a huge flag. red I know. flag. Honestly, Scary. one of my ex boyfriends. This was like I honestly wouldn't even consider him an ex. It was like a summer fling, but we said like I love you, and we didn't. So I don't know what was going on there. But um, he never once paid for not only my food, his food. I paid for every single meal for both of us. Okay, so that's like a hot take with girls. But my thing is like I. If I'm dating you and we're, like, consistently getting things all the time, I feel like I'm going to give you my card at times and be like, let me pay. But, like, if you're going out to dinner or, like, eating meals and shit or, like, even if you're going to the movies, like, yeah. why, the guy I think should be paying. Especially I on so. a, like, date. Like on a, a date. Designated especially. Date. Especially. No, Cody actually doesn't even – I mean, I pay, like, every here and there for, like, my own coffee because he usually pays for it. Like, he never lets me pay for anything, honestly. Right. Which I – admire i love no that's literally awesome which like i think too it's when you're dating someone and especially like people in relationships who don't have a ton of money yeah. it's like you guys kind of split shit every once of in a while course. but like, then like so normal if like you're gonna take a girl on a first fucking date or like have her like come and see you or like yeah. hang out with her buy her the fucking meal buy Seriously. her the fucking thing open her fucking door like be no, a and i feel guy. like that just shows a lot about his character like for sure you're not gonna act like a gentleman mm-hmm. at all literally no and since that our first date cody does not let me open my own car door any yeah. door but uh, like especially my car like that's a huge thing he always walks around the other side even if his hands are like so full type thing like my door first. and it's just so hot yeah like, like it's okay so sexy hot. literally man yeah literally and too i think i want to be kind of like treated i want not treated well i don't know the word for it but i, mean, I hope you want to be treated well. yeah fucking <laughs> god i sound so down bad i want to be treated well. <laughs> no i want um a guy to kind of like not baby me do you know what i'm saying like yes if you're like make make them feel like he is the man he's make the man feel yes like, like not full-on princess treatment but low-key princess treatment every yes. once in a while like, no, but, that's how if it I'm should like, be babe i left my fucking charger in my car and they're like oh i got it like see the that's something cody like, oh, does he gets everything for me and i'm they like does should. he think i'm like lazy because i feel like that's why my videos do good good with cody's because all these girls are like damn this guy's just actually like that no literally and also i think too growing up in the south you like see how guys should kind of treat girls yeah. but then low-key it's like leaving the south like no one in the south even is doing that now i know it's I like know. what the fuck 
No, it's really, it's this generation. It's honestly so it bad. Is. It's so bad. And I think too, it's the way people get raised as well, yeah. but it's kind of like, they can't help that. And also, I just feel like for some reason, it's so cool to be fucking bitches all the time. Like, yes. oh, like I fucked this girl. Like, it's a flex nowadays. And I know. I, it sucks. It is. It's so fucking, it's bullshit. Also, like, when I hear guy, when I used to, because I do hang out with guys a lot, yeah, and I will say- friends. When I hang out with guys and I'm hearing the way that they talk about girls, I used to just like push it off a shoulder and be like, yeah. whatever, like that's normal. That's how guys are. No. Like it's I not realized how should be. stepping into other friend groups and shit and being around other guys. Because like, you've been with like, you've had a really good like guy friend group recently, mm-hmm. haven't you? And I get along with guys well, not even like they want to fuck me way. And yeah. like people call me all the time. They're like, she's so pick me because I hang out with guys. No, it's because girls like I'm traumatized from high school. Like I'm literally so yeah. scared of girls. I'm very picky about guys I'm hanging out with. Like if they're uh-huh. a douchebag. I'll tell them to their face, like, you're no, a I, douchebag. I got a comment on my TikTok that said he was so pick me. And I actually, like, took, like, privated the video because I was like, I noticed that, that made me mad. People because say that. It used to really get to me. Now no, I don't care. Yeah, just rolls off your shoulder. But even last, the past three days hanging out, we have never actually once, like, been talking to guys. We it's haven't. been us girls the whole Only time. Only the Ubers. Yeah. No, literally. Asking about their life. Like, mm-hmm. not normal ass shit. But I'm a people person. Yeah. Also, we've been hanging out with Isabel, who's, like, so fucking dope. I want to have on the pod too we all three wanted to do one but we were doing so much let's explain like our weekend and stuff okay so long story short i found katie online and like we just kind of like started snapchat yeah because we have a lot of things in common Mm -hmm. like and like you grew up close to me like it was just and we like so i was honestly just asking city for a lot of advice on social media and stuff because i'm still a little bit lost Mm -hmm. and i could tell like from the fucking bat i was like this girl's normal like i I love that and i was like whoa breath of fresh air no you are too other people on social media literally like don't answer me for months and yeah just get back to me and like be so real with the advice you were giving Mm -hmm. i was like i appreciate that like i admire that Mm -hmm. and then isabel i found her on tiktok and i was like i found her on tiktok recently and was stalking her hardcore and we both mm -hmm. talked about how we do that with her yes like we're like what is she up to she it's so interesting and Mm -hmm. she's so she's so much like us too like she's just very out there normal girl no so normal in new york city but so normal i found her because she had a video that was about her ex that she broke up with here and they lived together then she was single and i was like oh i need to like hang out with her but i had a boyfriend at the time but i was like she just seems so dope and then me and my boyfriend broke up and, and she, she a had a boyfriend yeah. and i was like fuck my life because you had a boyfriend too yeah. she had a boyfriend and then she posted a video and she's like i fucking got on my hands and knees for my ex last night and begged him back and like no, we're broken up that's when i and really I started like, stalking her hardcore i yeah. like low-key like i felt bad but i'm like we've talked about it and we're just like thank god we're both single yeah but we all were like we're fucking meeting up in nashville it was so last minute no the fact we that it actually York, worked out and like we we're sitting we here right do. now i know and like I picked up Isabel, I want to say it was like Monday night and yeah. then you came over the next day and we just went to like little events, okay, throughout the week. Yeah. But first They're night- They're honestly like all like Isabel's events. No, I know. <laughs> first night though, we literally, you was it during the day? We picked you up during the day, went yeah. shopping. Yes. All like- Say you got like- rear-ended. I did get rear-ended. What the fuck was that shit? But literally felt like we all had known each other for so long. No, it was never awkward. And honestly, no. I was so nervous walking into like meeting two girls that mm-hmm. I've never met in person. And it, we just all clicked so fast. Hit it off. Like hit it the fuck off. And then first night we went out. Literally all three of us blacked out. Mm-hmm. And like, like no one batted an eye at each other the next day. Like no one was judgy. We all were just like, damn. Like that's no, how we because do I it. Low key, I woke up the next morning and I was like, these girls probably think I'm psycho. And I got there and you guys were all like, I'm not gonna. Open. Cody like, like picked her up. She went back to Cody's and then she comes over the next morning. We're gonna go to this like tar event. And literally I walk out and I'm like, guys. Did we go to a second location last night? And we all like blacked out. So we don't remember going to the second place. Literally, we would be such trouble if we all lived here. Like if we all lived here. I wish though. We (laughs) low-key should, like low-key. But it was so much fun. So fucking normal. And then we went to the Tarte event. And then literally all day long. Like I realized this this morning when I was thinking about it. We literally all day long just talked. All three of us just talked all day long. Like would go to different locations, get drinks, and just talk all day. No, but it was like so refreshing and there's still so much to talk about like i actually so much. feel like we could talk forever i know so much that's we actually did. so rare i feel like meeting people even like not even social media girls but girls in general it's really hard to find good friends when you're like grown i feel like mm-hmm. and for me too like especially in this social media world like i have my hometown friends like yeah. i love them to death and like they'll be my girls forever but i've like lost hope in social media like i have one good friend bailey in social media yeah but i was like I don't know if I'm going to find people that just... Honestly, some, I didn't think I would. Some people are, like, nice. You just don't really click. Yeah. And so I'm like, damn. Like, I waited around for a really long time before I found people that I was like, wait, 
these are like dope luckily girls. i just like kind of started the tiktok thing full time social okay <laughs> just started doing the tiktok thing yeah so i felt really lucky to have met two real ass bitches so quick mm, no i'm like so grateful for it but i will say i always say this in my podcast i'm like don't be friends with shitty girls just because you want girlfriends yeah and like the meeting you guys went to show me that i'm like damn i've kind of been like down bad about i'm never gonna find friends yeah. social media for so long and i'm like damn like and waiting actually, around they are out there but now no. i'm like you guys must be the only ones <laughs> i know we need to like maybe we'll start like a, a group of course. <laughs> a group. Like camp a hype house like a content house i honestly though like yeah you guys were just dope like i was so shocked no, i was like going to bed and i was like fuck it didn't feel like i was meeting social media friends it like felt like i was talking to girls i've known for years and like and i was forgetting way. to like get my camera out and shit i was like fuck we should be filming this yeah no but it was just such good conversation the whole time and like tea being spilled mm-hmm, literally so what are what are your i guess not plans but kind of plans now with social media and stuff i want to like i love how you do merch i admire that so much i want to do stuff like that it's a lot of work actually to find people and honestly a lot of the times you're not making a good commission so it's like damn you're putting in all this work to really not even like make it's like very businessy yes it is so businessy it's so fun though i want to do that i honestly have been like trying to do the youtube thing trying i bought a camera and like have not been using it (laughs) because the camera sucks it was like expensive yeah like it's weird canon g7x guys you see my like go-to camera like the mark three that's supposed to be so good no i think what they do now is they take the cameras they refurbish them like broken cameras because mine i literally got it and like with like it was my fourth one using it like five times i was like why does this already suck again no it goes out of focus the whole time maybe i just don't know how to work it but i thought about doing youtube a lot of people tell me to make a podcast but i'm just honestly like i'm over here blabbering but i'm like i can't talk for that long no you can I, I definitely could and i think too once you're doing it the thing with me the whole time i've been on the internet i've never been consistent you'll never yeah. know when a post is going up it's just so inconsistent and low-key trying to get consistent with it now i'm always worried that i'm not gonna have anything to talk about that week and when i sit down and just start talking it goes by so quick no it's serious like i tell people does. start a fucking podcast if you want to like we've been talking for 40 minutes no literally wow. And it's just, especially one thing I will say though, is I don't have a lot of guests on and I think it's because I hate feeling like I'm interviewing someone. I have to know the person first. Yeah. Have to. No, like I said, I'm, I get really nervous about that stuff because I'm like, I don't want it to come off as awkward and weird, but immediately like we clicked and I was like, okay, wait, I would Mm. love to be on your pod. You should totally start one. Yeah. That'd be so good. It's just, I'm like, I just feel like I'm going to run out of stuff, but I guess. People but also like it doesn't matter ramble, so. yeah and it's too like you won't yeah like uh, honestly you probably have so many funny stories throughout the week of like shit that happens that is so true like also, i'll like, definitely go in depth about our weekend doing stuff like with you guys this makes me want to like get out and like do mm-hmm. things more because the stories we have just from these three so days, funny yeah i'm literally bruised the fuck up i don't, I don't know, know how i don't remember you falling or anything and last night we literally went back to the airbnb and we're all sitting around talking for so long. The time was ticking by so fast. Like, we forget to, like, go out. We forgot to go out. We just were literally slammering the No, slammering I left at, like, two, two-something. After we just sat around and took shots all night and then yeah. ate mac and cheese. Yeah. Like, what the fuck were we I doing? I ate mac and cheese in two bites also. It was, it was like, so no, good. God, the anxiety today, though, was terrible. Oh, my God. I've been having... Okay, wait. So, do you have anxiety? Yes. I feel like it's gotten a lot worse with social media. That makes me feel better because I feel like I've been so sheltered at home with social media. And, like, too, being in a relationship for a while, I was, like, very not out in the social media world. I kind of just, like, had a boyfriend Mm -hmm. and did my own thing. Stepping into the world of it now and, like, trying to figure it out on my own has been literally terrifying. Yeah. Like, I never have had that Honestly, I think you do it so well. And I'm like, Aww, damn, thank how, you. Does, how does the hate and stuff not get to you? Because sometimes it'll, like, get to me so bad. I'm like, I, I'm going to delete my TikTok. Oh, really? Yeah. I've, like, I've been dealing with it a lot, little bit better this past couple of weeks, but it gets to me. Yeah. Like, it sucks. I think the biggest thing I dealt with, not to bring it back to me, but a lot of people were like, she's changed so much. And it's because I started yeah. so young. Yeah. And so it's like, of course, I'm going to, like, be different, but... You're maturing on camera. Yeah. Like- and there was a video that went up and it was, like, hearing Sadie talk like this in her videos now or something. And the girl wasn't being mean. She was just, like, talking mm-hmm. about it. And it got, like, 100,000 likes. And I was with my boyfriend in Mexico, like, down Does bad. Does that your, like, heart racing? I was just down bad because I, like... I start to actually question my own self. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck. Or like getting compared, not compared, but when other girls in social media that are kind of tied in groups with you are really bitchy. Yeah. And then you have to like kind of deal with that. Like, 
we've mm-hmm. talked about like shit like that and it's just like that will get to me too yeah. i start being like fuck who the fuck even am i type shit dang no that like makes me so so sad that why is, are people so hateful on the internet i know why do they have nothing better to do than tear people apart i didn't realize you really got any hate i just like isabel was talking she made a video and she was like i don't really get hate comments so this one kind of triggered me and i was like going through her comments and i was like damn she does not get any hate comments Mm -hmm. and i guess i don't get a lot of hate compared to some other people but when i see girls that just get none i'm like dang like why do i get like hate comments but i have to realize cool i I have to realize the more followers i get the more people are gonna like be saying that shit and something i had to really learn over the years too is like not everyone's gonna like you and you're not gonna be able to make everyone like you and that was like a thing for me is if someone were to comment like she seems like a bitch i'd be like oh i'm gonna post something nice so they don't think i'm a bitch like because why do they think i'm a bitch and it's just you know i talked about going on bffs yeah that episode i'm so fucking awkward like i was just so nervous and uncomfortable like we were saying like the interview type shit yeah i was literally like i don't i like blacked out the episode like i literally blacked out during it because i was just like don't even know like i got off and i cried and i was like what did i I even just do i would have actually like please don't post that i was down fucking bad for like a week after like just so sad and then i really realized like okay people like not everyone's gonna like me and like i have to be okay with that yeah. if you just have the people that do fuck with you and like they'll like stand up for you and shit that's all that yeah, really that's matters so true. and i actually really love that about my following is i feel like even if i do get a hate comment my followers are there to defend me immediately and that actually means so much to me i'm like mm-hmm. okay like fuck their opinion like literally fuck this one person's opinion yeah and also i get a lot of comments anytime i mention my mom like in any way um i'll get comments like yeah wait till she's like cracked out again like yeah just like crazy just being such a cunt for and no like reason. that person's a weirdo behind a screen like probably sitting no, in their dark room i genuinely think it's like cody's ex-girlfriend <laughs> It's weird too when you feel like someone you know in person is on there doing that shit. Yes, and like I when it's a random have a lot person, of like, like old whatever. friends that like don't really like me for whatever reason. And yeah, I just feel like that's some shit they do because they have nothing better to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like fuck that. Like, yeah. why would you do that? Why would Not, you want to make someone honestly, feel bad? Honestly, it makes me feel better if it is someone I knew because that's what they're doing with their time. Literally, exactly, like, and even the fact that you might not know them, it's like that's what they're fucking doing. No, isn't it crazy? Like. We can bother, like, our stranger so much. They have to go, like, make 10 fake accounts. And that's just crazy to me. Get a life. Literally. I will say, when I was, like, 11 years old, I feel like I would, like, go comment, like, hate shit on, like, famous people's pictures. (laughs) hope, Literally hoping that they would, like, respond to be, like this is very hateful don't say this stuff yeah like literally 11 year old me or like okay i had this weird ass thing with sea world because i hated like that they in yeah captivity. a lot of people do I've orca whales anything, like yeah. i was so into that i'm literally blocked by every sea world <laughs> but like they probably thought i was like fucking 25 year old person going yeah. on there and commenting i'm literally an 11 year old on my ipad like that's so funny. and that's like the people giving you hate comments too that's they want so you to true respond. like they're little kids sometimes and i have to realize that like and they want you to respond they yeah. like are looking for you to respond to it no i get a lot of comments that are like cody He's too good for you and i'm gonna steal him and i'm just like like who are you yeah i would comment that i'm kidding <laughs> he's so good no he is he's so not good. too good for you though you deserve him i like i'm so thankful for him it's no funny he, it's fucking awesome i literally am like sore from this weekend i'm actually not i don't know how because i was walking around in those boots like those high heel boots i'm like my neck hurts really i honestly always get that when i have a crazy weekend but okay. i don't know you also just got back from old miss are you not like true no i'm dying you were drinking there the whole time too friday saturday drove up here monday tuesday wednesday oh my gosh but you just had to with us i did have to i didn't have a choice and i'm so glad i did no it was so much fun anxiety though my fucking neighbor or not neighbor one of my childhood best friends she gets that so much i've never understood it i'm like you're so dramatic like because yeah. i used to i think it's coming with age but i used to literally like go to colleges i didn't care where i slept i would wake up roll out of bed I get in like my car too. i feel like that's a part of growing up that yes we're like maturing i literally didn't care where i slept i'd wake up and be like fuck it whatever wasn't thinking about a thing in the world now i'm like so anxious no i wake up and i'm like <sighs> like my heart actually I yes feel it pounding like this why does like, it do that hard. why does it do that i don't know but I, it's the worst feeling in the whole entire world like, you feel like something's fucking wrong honestly like the anxiety was worth it for the days i had with y'all they were but it was so terrible after especially today honestly i was like sadie i don't know if you want me to come on the pod today like i, I have no energy i know but it, it actually worked out I it did work better. out i was low-key stressed about that too in Ole miss though i woke up the fucking second night we were there i woke up and my heart was literally like 
and like we were in a house with like no when guys. I start shaking I'm like this yeah no it's fucking terrifying and then like nothing around you seems re- all I want is my mom yeah. in that moment like I'm like fuck I just want to be at home with my mom no Cody's like my anxiety person and even he can't like make the anxiety go away which is when you know it's really bad mm-hmm. like yeah your comfort person can't even like talk you down and anxiety for what like we didn't do anything crazy. I know I know like I we, all know. we did was talk with each other and like drink literally a lot literally i think it's just like your body's just like damn yeah. like that no, was and it's a lot. honestly crazy because we are like drinking poison i know like it's so bad i'm like starting this sounds fucked up i'm literally starting to like not love same and i just turned 21 i'm like damn i know i'm like it's it was i feel like i just had my party stage and same. i'm like now i'm kind of like same. ready to chill me i partied way too much but does this happen to you wait like does this i was literally had a question like <laughs> wait i thought you to burp <laughs> wait okay not drinking anymore i okay. feel like i'm growing up anxiety your comfort person can't calm you down anxiety for what we weren't even doing anything <laughs> <laughs> honestly like i forgot i'm so confused what i was just gonna say that always happens but yeah i i know what you're gonna say i don't yeah. but like sure you, you just yeah me. yeah no i feel like i've really calmed down with drinking like yeah I, do I like have to, have, too. like, with my, when I'm out and stuff, but I just, I don't drink, like, for fun like that anymore. No, and I honestly... What am I saying? Yes, I do. I, I was gonna say, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, same. I've been literally belligerent the past yeah. five days. Like, what the fuck? Okay, but I, oh, I was, I, okay, I was gonna say, does this happen to you? Like, I used to never get hungover, ever. No, And now same. it's like, every time I drink, I need a whole next day to recover. What's weird, though, is I went through a stage of never getting hungover. Then I went through a stage of I couldn't drink without puking. I would puke every time I drank. Now I'm just like, I get hungover, but it's more anxiety yeah. now. Like, no, I just am so anxious. The anxiety is so bad for me. I used to, like, have a really bad blackout phase where every time I drink, I'd get blackout, but no one knew I was blackout because I'm a functional person no me you and drunk. isabel yes, terrifying like, i will actually keep going all night so scary i mean lucy literally found me in an alley one time with a homeless person just chilling like, i was just sitting down talking to him but that's fucking awesome and i though. also lost my phone my i i threw away my car keys in a dumpster oh um, like my did, it had God. nothing to my name she found me because she checked my life 360 and was screaming katie down like the streets she was like katie and eventually i was like oh lucy you're like yo bob that's my friend <laughs> yeah. coming to get me you know, and lucy was like get away she's like come on yeah like what are you doing no, thank god for her because i probably would have just slept in the alley <laughs> that's fucking hilarious you know, and i went back to that same spot to look for my phone like six times bob's like i got it yeah no and i could not find it i went to my bank canceled my card pulled out cash because i was like oh my How god I going to live? yeah and then i really like Honestly, I, I don't know if this was God because I'm like, he probably was like, you deserve that. But I prayed so much and I was like, God, please, like, let me find my phone. I will chill with drinking. Like, And then you did? I did. And Damn. I my car keys, too, they were in completely different p- places, too. My keys were in, like, a dumpster. Like, See, do you have stuff. anxiety then, do you think? Or probably not. Did I have then? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I also broke up with my boyfriend that night. Because oh. I was, like, blackout drunk and I was like, we're done. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude. It was so bad. Drinking in relationships... When you're not in a good relationship, yeah. drinking makes everything so much worse. It brings it out. Like, mm-hmm. it brings all the toxic up. Everything, yeah. Agreed. I feel like, too, someone said this. I forget who. Oh, I think it was Alex Cooper. She said in one of her episodes that her, like, whenever her and the guy she's, like, engaged to now yeah. are drinking, if they start getting in a fight, they both agree, like, nope, we have to handle this when we're sober in the morning. And she's yeah. like, it literally saved everything. Wait, and that's like, so Damn. true because Cody will say one little thing and I take it the complete wrong way when i'm drunk i'm like okay he told me that his friend was said i was like probably cheating in knoxville because like the 50 mile like radius rule whatever and i was like oh so your friends hate me okay. yeah like, you like I just, just go off. so out of pocket yeah i don't know i i sometimes love a good fight in a relationship Most that's same, fucked up that's when it's fucked like, up relationship's so good so sometimes i just need to stir stuff up that sounds so toxic and bad but yeah see for me though it's like if i'm drunk I used to drunk fight with my high school ex a lot, but yeah. like it was fun. Like we would wake yeah. up the next morning and be like, fuck you. And like it was just no, like it's funny. Actually, like just always me and Cody like doesn't feed into it. So I'm like, really? Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah. I feel like alcohol, it just it points out a lot. Yeah. But also like causes a lot. No, it's I feel poison. Like I used to 
get mad at Cody, honestly. Like, when I drink a lot, I used to always, like, find something to get upset over. And he was like, Katie, you need to stop doing this. It happened, like, three times in a row. So, he was like, Katie, like, we're not going to fight every time you drink. And I was like, Honestly, mature of him, though. Yeah, no, he's so mature. He's also 23. So, I just turned 21. I'm still, like, learning. But, yeah. Um, yeah, we actually haven't fought since. I was like, you're so right. Like, I just need to, like, not jump to conclusions. Right. Like, yeah. No, and I think, too, it's, like, I think about so many things that, like, me and ex-people have fought about drunk and I'm just like, what the no, fuck? No, I wake up the next day and I'm like, wait, that was that, that just wasn't a big deal. Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? And like, it can be no, so it's, flipped. It's being drunk amplifies all your emotions like times 20. Mm-hmm. So you get upset like over something when you're sober, you would get upset before anyways. But like right. a tiny little upset, you know, like, hey, please don't do that. And then when you're drunk and it upsets you, you're like, oh. <gasps> We need to break up. And too, I think it brings out like insecurities that aren't talked about in relationships. Like when you're drunk, you'll start being like, well, you fucking do this. And you're like taking a step back. I remember one time I was like talking about his, like how he could never like like an Instagram photo, like of a girl, like Mm -hmm. a girl's body or something. And he was like, you can go through my likes. So I did. And these pictures were liked before I was even dating him, but I was still, there were girls and I was like, (gasps) yeah i was like i'm you're a slut Mm -hmm. (laughs) no i get that would you ever would you let a guy go through your phone Mm. like it's not even that i have anything to hide i just don't like that i have let a guy go through my phone for sure i will literally preach to the gods never do it if you're in a relationship and you feel like you should go through his phone or he goes through yours I feel like the relationship's no. literally fucked from there. I've actually Not never in the way been, that you did it. No, no, like, no. I've actually never there. been through yeah. Cody's phone. Like, yeah. he just handed me his Instagram likes one time. But I feel I told this to Cody because sometimes, you know, like, we can both be insecure. And I was like, look, if never worry about, like, me, like, cheating on you. Because, first of all, I would never. But also, why would you want to stop someone that they're even thinking about that? Like, go yes. ahead and cheat. Like, why would you yes. want to stop someone? Let it happen and be like, okay, fuck you for that. Literally. And also... If someone's cheating behind your back, the truth is always going to come out. I completely agree with that. One of my best friends told me that. She was mm -hmm. like, the truth literally always will show. I would just rather let it come out and not me be looking for it all the time. Because it does. It's like crazy. I've had like exes go through my phone when I'm not around. Yeah. And I'm literally like, oh my God. That's that's fucked up. That's fucked up. My ex did that. I was like putting a pizza in the oven and I come back and he's like through my like going through my phone because I had hooked up with someone when we were broken up and he was like trying to figure out who Mm -hmm. and I was like holy shit that is such an invasion of privacy and too it's like then they see shit that like wasn't even bad but like then they're gonna make something about it like I've had someone go through my like me and my mom's text and they're like you said this and I'm like what the fuck that's my mom that's my best friend literally no one is supposed to see those and then I'll get toxic and go through their phone and I'm like why the fuck am I doing this like this is stupid phones suck no phones seriously do suck and I actually wish we lived in the old times where we had same same and like because you would always be doing stuff with your Mm -hmm. boyfriend like it would never like you and too, never be chilling on your phone. Like, and you it's like going, you're not sitting there like waiting for a text or like yes. seeing if they read it or are they active on Instagram or like Literally. did they post a TikTok or whatever. N- none of that. It's just like, oh, he's yeah. calling me. Oh, he's at the pizza place. Let's no, go. That's so cute. I love that. Watching old movies like that really gets me in my feels. Literally. For real. Okay, so you guys met Katie. We recapped some of her life. We also talked about our weekend. Mental health. Toxic ass men. Anxiety. Um, anxiety, health, anxiety. Yeah. anxiety good ass men looking for one and lucy <laughs> i want to meet lucy no you need to she, she seems so cute so chill. but thank you so much you're fucking dope <laughs> we also are gonna do so many trips and stuff like this is literally day three of us hanging out in person no and we're like, about to do so much i wasn't even expecting to hang out every single day you were here i know it's like i want to mm-hmm. like i miss you no it was so fun it really was Ugh. but bye tmi we love you bye tmi i told nothing but the truth Plug yourself really quick. What's your... Oh, at Katie Richie with two eyes and Richie. Okay. Love you. Love y'all.